Well, let's shift our attention now to the issue of privacy and take a look at some of the glaring examples of privacy problems that exist. It turns out some of the confetti at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was not confetti at all, but shredded documents from the Nassau County Police Department. And let's just say the shredding doesn't, wasn't done very well. One young man started to collect it after he noticed something strange on the bits of paper that fell on his friend's jacket. Here's a bit from a local news report with more details. She looked at it, she picks it off her jacket, and it says SSN, and then there's a number, and it's, you know, written like a social security number. And we were like, that's really bizarre. It looked like this. We blurred out the social security number and other information, but it made the college freshman concerned, so he and his friends picked up more. There are phone numbers on it, addresses, more social security numbers, license plates, numbers, and then we find, like, all these incident reports from police. In fact, some of the confetti strips mentioned arrest records and had official police reports. So it turns out this so-called confetti also included information about things like Mitt Romney's motorcade when he was in town for the debate, even identified detectives, including some who worked undercover. I want to talk about this and, and several other privacy problems with RT correspondent Anastasia Cherkina. Hey there, Anastasia. What's the reaction to this in New York? Well, uh, Christine, for people who have heard this story, it's really hard to get over how ridiculous it sounds because when we think of confetti, the first thing that pops into mind are these little round, colorful pieces of paper, right? But as we just saw in that report, the ones in question here are long and pretty wide uh, strips of paper that you don't even need to, you know, put together to be able to read the information that they contain. And uh, it's incredible how much information uh, was held in this so-called confetti. I mean, like you say, undercover police information, uh, no less a presidential candidate's motorcade, uh, you know, and it was just like, hey, okay, let's throw around this fun pieces of paper. It's, it's really, people are saying, what's next? Are they going to start selling puzzles as, uh, you know, Christmas gifts so you can put them together and see some sort of secret, uh, state secret information? It's, it's really ridiculous. And uh, some people who are actually concerned are saying, what else is out there? I mean, if it's that easy to uh, have somebody throw around uh, secret information from the state, uh, uh, what what else can be out there that people don't know of because uh, another vigilant uh, college student didn't catch it yet. Yeah, you give him one point for trying to recycle, but uh, negative a thousand points uh, for what was actually being shredded and the way it was being shredded. It, it must have been uh, very strange to, to see this. Um, it is a surprising example, of course, but let's remember, too, we are in a digital age. So much of what we do uh, not only isn't private, but will live on forever. Take a listen. I don't know how many times I have to go on the air and tell people your privacy is not private when it comes to your actions online. We hear stories like this all the time. Teachers, other people losing their job uh, because of a picture posted on Facebook. Uh, talk a little bit about this, Anastasia. Well, I mean, Christine, we all know that in this day and age, anybody who, uh, you know, to quote George W. Bush, uses the Internet uh, has heard trillions of times that uh, do, you should not be posting, tweeting, or emailing anything that you would be ashamed to see on a magazine cover because that's how, uh, you know, private the Internet is. And we know that with Twitter, for example, even a deleted tweet is there forever. With Facebook, they own the photos that you have once posted there. They remain on Facebook, uh, even though if you delete them, they are still owned owned by the company with, uh, you know, even apps like uh, Snapchat, for example, that have been quite popular recently where uh, p users are uh, kind of promised that their photos will be destroyed in, say, 10 seconds after the recipient sees them. There's still no promise. Uh, you know, nobody made taking snapshots of uh, screenshots illegal. So you never know who uh, is going to do that and kind of reveal your private information. And uh, of course, we're not even getting into the whole area of, you know, emails being monitored and so on. It's just really it's really funny that in this kind of self-obsessed, uh, self-centered culture, people are tweeting and posting these very personal and private details about themselves, thinking they're just sending them to friends or, you know, acquaintances. But in reality, just because these actions are so light and uh, take a couple of seconds to post, uh, they're not light at all and can have quite important consequences. And people know this, yet uh, one after another fall into these traps. And we can't talk about this without talking about uh, some of the lessons that people, uh, famous people even, have learned uh, about sexting.
One of the most well-known examples, of course, was dubbed Wienergate. Anthony Wiener, uh, the Democratic congressman from New York, was sending suggestive photos of himself over Twitter. Uh, there was also Congressman Christopher Lee, who ended up resigning after sexting a woman on Craigslist. There's uh, the football player, Brett Favre, whose photo we actually can't show you, uh, but it was sent along with some gra graphic text messages to a former Playboy model he was speaking to. And who can forget Tiger Woods, whose extramarital affair was made public after his mistress released text messages and voicemails uh, that he had sent. So, you know, these are, of course, some of the most high-profile examples of, you know, how what you do is much harder than ever to hide from. But Anastasia, in your reporting on privacy matters, I know you've done a lot. Uh, are people learning to live in this digital world? And where do we go from here? Well, uh, in terms of are they learning, Christine, you know, apparently not, because these examples keep coming up more and more often, uh, you know, as uh, people get more involved in uh, newer and newer social networking sites. So this is something that we're seeing all the time. I mean, when we're seeing these high profile people, when we're seeing, you know, CIA generals obviously not being able to keep their uh, privacy secret online, uh, how can anybody else be able to, you know, learn to do that? Uh, but in terms of, uh, you know, uh, where do we go from here? It's uh, either people are going to have to be more conservative online, uh, you know, and try to keep some of these uh, private photos or private messages to themselves, which is not likely going to happen, as we know, of course, with all of these examples and many more that we still are probably, uh, will be hearing in the, you know, months and years to come. But uh, uh, maybe the public needs to just kind of relax a little bit and uh, get over it. If sexting is now going to be a part of, you know, everyday reality when social networking is all around us, maybe uh, uh, people should start treating it like, lightly, but also that that's something not, that's not very likely to happen, of course, because we live in a kind of scandal-obsessed society. So uh, very likely that anything that comes out there is going to be buzzed about. But that's just uh, one of the risks people should take in, in case of these high-profile personalities. If they're going to do that, those are the consequences. I think you raise a really good point, Anastasia, that something that only takes 15 seconds or a minute, uh, people, it, you know, it doesn't cross their mind. But, but what gets me and what is just so interesting being here in Washington is lawmaker after lawmaker, politician after politician doing these scandalous things uh, with digital media and not learning, you know, from their other co-workers and colleagues who, who have gone down in scandal. They're making the same mistakes. Uh, at least it makes for, for uh, exciting times here. RT correspondent Anastasia Cherkina.